This year, start your bass tournament season off by fishing the 27th venue Frostbite Big Bass Open, February 25th at the all-new Fate Santa's Marina, located on Percy Priest Lake. Early entry is $65, guaranteed payout for big and small bass. For more information, visit our website at tnbassmasters.com. This segment is being sponsored by Capital Sports. Welcome back, everyone. This week's Picture of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Don't have much time left on that, but they're out there at 4550 Eaton's Creek Road. I promise you, it's the best venison you will ever sink your teeth into. They are great, great, great at doing their job. Our first picture here. This is a Barry Parker. Now, I don't know if some of you may have seen this on Facebook or not, but Barry Parker is from La Follette, Tennessee, with the new state record tilapia at six pounds, six ounces. He caught 74 more of them that same day at the Gallatin Steam Plant on Old Hickory Lake. And I want to thank Todd St. John from TWRA is the one that sent me this picture and said, Hugh, you just got to talk about it tonight. What a fish. And let me tell you something else, ladies and gentlemen. We just ate some fresh tilapia. Jimbo just cooked. <laughs> Jimbo and Robbie and those guys went and caught them. Uh, there is a huge difference in wild tilapia and farm-raised tilapia no as far as eating. These wild tilapia taste just about like a bluegill. Absolutely. They are Delicious. awesome, aren't they, Brandon? Yes. They Delicious. are great. And thank you to Jimbo and Robbie for going out there and braving the cold and bringing home the, the vittles. <laughs> Our next picture here, uh, this is Joey Yates. And Joey Yates uh, caught this. Uh, bass here weighed nine pounds. Now, that, do you look at Joey there? That fish is almost big as he is. <laughs> yes. That is a great, great picture, Joey. You did a fantastic job, and dude, that that fish is just almost your same size. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is a big, big bass. But we uh, thank you for those, and and you know you send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters. 474 James Robertson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me, hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com, or through Facebook. Getting a lot of pictures through Facebook right now, uh, so keep them coming. We appreciate it very much. I have with me tonight Brandon Dowdy, and Brandon uh, is an avid, avid deer hunter in his own right. Um, great, great man of God in every other way, too, in talking about deer hunting. Um, and being able to share, and you're like I am, or I'm like you, brother, whatever the case may be, I like to share my info. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If I can bring somebody new into the sport, that just means that the legacy continues. Right. Without them, we're not, we might not have it. You know? We might not. And it's not just kids. I mean, it's adults. They're, it's everybody. You know, we, were, we were talking about that uh, before. There's a lot of adults out there that are, that are new to hunting. You know, they, they've never done it before, and they've got questions, and, and it's, it's I'd love to have them out. You know? I want to make sure that everybody realizes that, you know, 80% of the nation, of the people, don't hunt. Right. Don't care. Uh, they, they don't, they're not for it, and they're not against right. it. Right. So what we do, uh, how we treat each other, and our, how we treat fellow hunters and things like that, can sway that figure back and forth. Sure it can. And we have to consider we live in a democratic society that everything's done by majority vote. If that 80% all of a sudden says, hey, no more hunting, we're done. That's right. We'd, we'd be in big trouble. We'd be we? in big trouble. <laughs> we'd be poachers then. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I guess we would. Be. Brandon and I hate yeah, to say it, but we're going to be, be poachers, bro. Right. <laughs> I guarantee so, uh, but, you know, and we we need to consider that sometimes and how we act and how we display things and how we, yeah. uh, uh, you're, you're taking a life and you need to respect that life and because it was grown here and it's a state resource. I, I firmly believe it. We got other issues we need to talk to, talk to you about uh, as far as considering a state resource. But let's get back to two buck limit. A lot of people are talking about now, now that they've gotten their uh, fill of uh, a couple of years of two buck limit, 
Uh, why don't we do like Kentucky and go to one buck limit? Oh, the now, dreaded words. The dreaded <laughs> words. And, and, and Brandon, I'm going to say mine first, and then I want you to elaborate. Yeah. I don't want the one buck limit because I've been hunting in Kentucky with a one buck limit. And if you really have a cull buck that you need to take off your property, uh, I think things get done and deer get shot and they're not reported and you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's very possible. Absolutely. If you've got a two buck limit and you know you have a coal buck and you want to take him out, then take him. Check him in, do just like yep. do the proper thing. Yep. But you still have one. Right. You still got that magic. And the, you, that you can deer. take that trophy and let's see right. what kind of hunter you really are. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if you're like me, you know, and it's getting down to the last day, my my standards go down on the last <laughs> day. You know, those deer look bigger. In <laughs> they January, do. They? they do. I mean, I don't know if it's dry scoring them or not. You right. know, <laughs> but, right. but they get a. Uh, so, what do you think? I, I am not for a one buck limit at all. Um, I've discussed this back and forth with with lots and lots of people. Uh, there there are, are a few positives to any way you look at oh, anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, and it may work for Kentucky. It seems that they're you know they're doing just fine. Um, but you know, our our guys look at everything and they they come up with the regulations that we need. And, and I think it's fantastic the way it is. I do too. Um, like you say, if, if cold bucks a whole another conversation we could get into. But, oh yeah. Uh, but the point is, if you've got those two buck tags, uh, it does allow you to to maybe you might have a guy that you know he might just want to take one, make sure he's got one in the freezer, and then go for a big one or hurt. He may have a you know a, a four year old five point buck he wants to shoot, and he still wants to trophy. So uh, the second tag I think is is helpful in that. Uh, and I also think that, that here in Tennessee they've done a great job with allowing, uh, I consider myself, what, what we call ourselves, I'm a trophy meat hunter. Yeah. Um, I eat deer meat year round, we eat it all the time, but I'm a trophy hunter too, mm -hmm. you know, when it, when it comes to bucks. Um, I, I don't, I'm not an antler guy, I'm an age guy, you know, mm -hmm. I, I like a, I like a 200 pound, you know, four and a half year old deer, that's, that's just what I'm after. Um, but but I think with a one buck, not only would you deter hunters, number one, you're going to deter hunters. You're probably going to, you know, in my this is just my opinion, you're probably going to increase poaching, like you said. There's probably going to be more incidences um, of, of unreported deer. Um, they, I just think that there would, there would be several negatives, and I don't think that, that everybody fully understands uh, the positive versus the negatives on that. Um, Brandon, we got a caller. Let's see what... Uh uh, Steve, Steve, how can we help you tonight? Uh, yeah, I just want to say you got a great guest on there tonight. He's hunted on my <laughs> farm with me before, and he, he's a he's a great ambassador for hunting. Great, thank you, Steve. And how you doing, Brandon? Doing fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to, he's he's really excellent on minerals for deer, and I would just like to hear him talking on that some. Sure. What about the minerals? Um. You know, with, with minerals, that, that's something that, that we use. I use it, I'll tell you the truth, I use minerals for the most part to get buck pictures. Um, they, they've looked into whether or not, you know, are they going to give you bigger antlers? Are they going to give you bigger deer? You know, there's some things that show there might be a little more bone growth or things like that from them, but really and truly, I look at them as a way to get deer into that area, and for some reason, um, especially your more mature bucks, they will go to that salt lick. They will walk right over it. I know a lot of our deer will walk right past a corn feeder to go to a salt lick. Um, and so There's I, I use something, them for, though, that they know they need. They know that it's the, they yeah, know right. they, they need know it. They need it, and they'll um, and they will hit that just just day after day after yes, day sir. after day in the summer. Um, and right up until they they lose their velvet, they'll 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 kind of back off of them when that velvet falls, and and they'll kind of get more into a little bit different pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but they do they know that they need it. They can get it naturally, but if we if we have it there for them, they can get it quicker, which which in turn can help you in the long run. All right. Well, I tell you what, we appreciate that, Steve, and uh, we hope that helps you out. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, sir. Hey, we got to do our product of the week. Uh, so uh, uh, it's being uh, sponsored by 
uh, Caney Fork Outdoors right there. The River Runners out there. And we just left uh, Ryan out there, Ryan Martin with Caney Fork Outdoors in the Donaldson area. And really nice setup. You will see it, all of us in our new kayaks and uh, we're excited about them but he wanted me to show a product for you and and Brandon and I, I I mean you look at this thing and I told you it was a Klingon machete <laughs> whatever you want to call it whatever Snake you want to call it but they use it for <laughs> sculling uh, the kayaks okay or stay still uh, they've got a hook up here for you to grab hold of a limb or a log and pull yourself over then they got these uh, teeth right here for pushing off of a log or mm -hmm. branch or whatever but also great snake charmers uh, uh, you know he doesn't have to get up very high to get in a kayak. You that, know that? That's right. He don't. <laughs> things help things him come to anyway. my mind when I, when I think of those yeah, things. You know, I'm you're like, talking about sculling a while ago. You <laughs> skull a snake with that thing, too. That's to. right. This is a snake charmer. I didn't say it was a snake killer. <laughs> no, just a snake just charmer. Just keep him off Just of keep him you off of kill me. Any snake. You know, a little bit of paddling here and a paddle there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but we want to thank Kenny Fork Outdoors for that and a great, great uh, item there for all of you kayakers out there to try. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, our phone lines will still be open. Give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. Be right back with more Southern Woods and Waters. Mm -hmm. 